and welcome to 8.4, regular polygons. We are going to derive a few more formulas today for area. Okay, so let's talk about the center of a regular polygon. Um, first of all, regular polygon means that it's equilateral and equal angular. We don't know how many sides it has because it can have infinitely many. Um, but the common center of the inscribed and the circumscribed circles of the regular polygon is also the center of the regular polygon. So let's look at a picture of what that means. Here is a regular polygon. If you count the sides, I believe this is an octagon. So if we inscribe a circle, that means that all of the sides midpoint touch the circle's circumference. And then we also circumscribe a circle where all of the vertices of the polygon touch the circumference of the circle. Then we can find that they, those two circles have the same center. That also becomes the center of the polygon. So that center is going to be very important to us here in the next couple definitions. Okay, so we know what the radius of a circle is. It goes from the center to the circumference, right? Well, the radius of a regular polygon is the segment that joins the center to one of its vertices. And the apothem is a new word probably that you've never heard before. Um, I mean, I can't think of a time where you have. If, if you can, that's awesome. Um, but anyway, it's a segment that goes from the center and it goes to the midpoint of the segment of a side, okay? And that segment actually happens to be the midpoint. Um, I'm sorry, a perpendicular. It ends up being a perpendicular bisector. So let's look at a picture of these two words these two new definitions. Okay, so here is a picture of a regular polygon. This one happens to be a pentagon. And if you remember, our definition of radius is a segment that joins the center to one of its vertices, and that's labeled R. Okay, so radius goes to the vertices, and then the A is the apothem. And if you notice, that is a perpendicular bisector, perpendicular because it's a 90 degree angle, and bisector because it is hitting the midpoint of the segment, of the side. Okay, a central angle of a regular polygon is the angle that's formed at the center of the polygon with two radii drawn on consecutive vertices. So here's a picture of a central angle. So by definition, the angle um, has two sides that are, have um, segments that are from the center to consecutive vertices. So if I were to draw um, an angle to any other vertices, I had one at R and then I changed not Q but went to a different one, it wouldn't be a central angle. Okay, It has to be from one vertices to the next. Now the central angles of a regular n-gon. Remember, an n-gon means we don't know how many how many sides it has. n is for number, any number of sides. They are congruent and measure 360 degrees divided by n. n means the number of sides. So if I have a five-sided figure, I'm going to divide 360 by 5, and so on. So let's go ahead and do an example. What are the measures of the central angles and the base angles of the regular octagon? The base angles would be, the central angle would be Q, P, R. The base angles are the two that are on inside the triangle but aren't P, Q, R. So it would be uh, P, R, Q and P, Q, R, uh, those bottom angles there. So we're finding all three angles inside that little triangle there. So first we're going to decide this is an octagon, which means we have to divide 360 by 8, and we get 45 degrees. So we already know that RPQ 
is 45 degrees. That's the central angle. And now remember, a triangle has a total interior angle of 180 degrees. So if we subtract off that 45, we know that the two angles left total 135. <clears throat> and because we know those angles are exactly the same measure, they're equal to each other because we have an isosceles triangle. The rate, every radius is equal to itself. So we know the opposite angles are congruent. Okay, so I can literally divide that 135 by two and I will know the angle measure of both of the remaining angles inside that triangle. So the area of a regular polygon is one half the product of its apothem and its perimeter. So these letters, we've used P for perimeter before, um, we've used A for area, so now we have a lowercase a. A big A is area, a lowercase a is apothem. So you're going to want to make notes on what these letters stand for. The apothem of an equilateral triangle is one-third the length of the altitude. So given the altitude um, of an equilateral triangle, you can find the height. That's what that means. So your half height times base, you can find the height if you're given the apothem. The apothem of an equilateral triangle is the square root of 3 times 1 sixth the length of a side. <laughs> so if you have the side, you can find the apothem of an equilateral triangle only. Remember, it has to be regul a regular triangle. So that would give you the square root 3 over 6 equal times side will give you the apothem. So we've just got all kinds of formulas for an equilateral triangle. All right, so let's practice using the formula we have for a regular polygon. So given um, the apothem, that's what that 12 represents. See how it's a perpendicular bisector of a side. And then we have this uh, radius drawn, but we don't have a side given to us. And then we are given a side that's 10. Now remember, 10 is the length of every single side on that figure, okay? So first, we need to find the perimeter because our formula says one half, one half apothem perimeter. So we have to find perimeter first. So n means number of sides times the side length, which is s. So I've got an eight-sided figure, each one is 10, so I've got a perimeter of 80. So here's my area formula, and I've got everything I need to just plug and chug this out. And I don't have units, so shame on me. 480 units squared is the area of this regular octagon. Okay, so let's find the area of a regular hexagon. Um, first, let's talk about the central angle. Okay, I have a side, and I, that's all I'm given. I'm not given the apothem, and I'm not, I'm not given the, any, any other information that I need. I need the perimeter, uh, but I can't find the central angle because I know I have a hexagon. So I've got that central angle of 60 degrees, so there's another number I need. Um, I can now find the base angle because remember I have an isosceles triangle. When I have two radii, I know are congruent, right? So if I know the rest of my base angles, so I take 180 minus 60 is 120, divide that by 2. So I have an equilateral triangle. 60, 60, 60 means I have an equilateral triangle. Okay, equal angular and equilateral. So I can technically find the area of the little triangles in the hexagon and then add them all up. So here's just an example here. I can, this one I'm going to try to find the apothem first. So I've got 2 squared because 2 is the bisector of the side 4 and then 4 squared being the hypotenuse. So now I can find that, hy that apothem is the square root of 12. And then I went and simplified. Remember, I can take a 4. Square root of 4 is 2, and I can take that out. 
So back to our example. I now know the apothem and the, and the perimeter, because 4 times 6 is 24, and I can find the area this way. Now, before I keep going, this is all your book shows for this example. Um, there is another way that I could find the area to this hexagon. That triangle I can do base times height because I found the apothem to be 2 square root 3. That is the height of that equilateral triangle. And I know the base is 4. So if I did half base times height, I would get the area of that little triangle. And if you look, there's going to be 6 equilateral triangles inside that hexagon. So if I found the area of 1 and then I multiplied it by 6, I would get the same answer. Okay, so the area here should be 24 square root 3 square units. And, they went ahead, and we went ahead and put the decimal here just in case. Alright, so for your WISC summary, I want you to go ahead a little bit to page 340 and I want you to do the mind over math numbers 1 through 4 and submit those to me through email and I will see you in class.